Hi everybody, this is Brian Koo with another ROK video. Today we're looking at a KVK Kingdom 770 is fighting on the Strife of the Eight map, which is a two versus six KVK. In this clip here, we are facing two kingdoms for the first time as we enter into zone six and attempt to flag across the map in an effort to take control of this zone and eventually break into Zone 5 Maka, where we hope to lock down both of these kingdoms. We're up against Kingdom 201 and 651 in this zone. We had already fought 201 in Zone 5 Akuri, where we uh, rather easily uh, locked them down after a few hours of fighting. Um, Kingdom 201 had some of the lowest kill points of any camp in this Strife of the Eight, and so we expected a pretty easy fight in a curry, and I think they realized uh, that they were outmatched there, and so they decided to retreat and put up a stiffer defense here in Zone 6. You might be asking yourself, what sort of diplomatic fail has to occur to get yourself in a two versus six KVK. Uh, but actually, we saw this as a diplomatic success for us. Kingdom 770 had won its previous heroic anthem KVK quite easily. Um, our two enemies decided to fight our allied camp instead of us. And so we basically won that KVK without having to do much. And so we came into this KVK really uh, wanting to make sure that we had uh, a lot of fighting, that we had a tough KVK where we could test our kingdom and give every player the chance to do a lot of fighting. Um, that way when the KVK is over and we're looking at everyone's contribution points, um, no one has the excuse, no low contributor has the excuse that they just weren't able to find any fighting whenever they logged in. Um, and so those low contributors uh, will either face a heavy fine after this KVK, or they will simply be asked to leave the kingdom. Um, and that's really how you uh, keep a fighting kingdom an actual fighting kingdom. You get you regularly get rid of the players that aren't fighting and you know you have these uh, tough KVKs that attracts new players into your kingdom and the type of players who you want to bring in. Um, in this KVK uh, we were not the only kingdom that wanted to have a tough test. We were not the only kingdom that wanted to play an outnumbered KVK. Kingdom 2206 actually explicitly wanted a two versus six KVK. And um, once we heard about that, uh, they found a very eager ally in us. Um, our main opposition in this KVK was a four kingdom alliance on the northern part of the map led by 2056, which uh, is a former Imperium kingdom that was the largest kingdom in this KVK. The two kingdoms that we're fighting here, 651 and 201, were not officially allied with the other four kingdoms, but they never fought the enemy, they shared zones peacefully with the enemy, and at times they coordinated attacks with some of the uh, camps that were allied against us. And so these two kingdoms were de facto allies with the other four, and they uh, exclusively fought against us, as you're seeing them do right here. 651 does this weird thing here where they <laughs> sent all their marches past the actual fight towards this random spot on the map. Uh, it looked like they were setting up a fort, but that was not the case. It was just kind of a weird thing. In this next clip, you're going to see uh, a really solid battle that takes place when we start building a flag at this choke point 
that touches both 201 and 651 territory. Uh, up to this point in the day, we had pretty easily flagged across the zone. The enemy didn't uh, defend their flags much, and we were, you know, burning across Batafo uh, as fast as we could. Uh, but then once we got to this point here, uh, right around this rather awkward circular cliff um, that made fighting a little bit um, stranger, uh, the, the enemy kingdoms realized that they had a pretty good opportunity. They had a chance to double rally us, and both kingdoms started teleporting in a lot of cities um, and looking to, you know, stop us from building this flag that we were trying to get down. Uh, things kicked off in earnest as a 651 rally leader teleported his city right to the front line and started uh, the Attila Nevsky rallies on our flag. Um, and, you know, you're seeing us make things tough on the enemy here. Yes, they have us surrounded. Yes, they have us outnumbered. But we are not going to just uh, concede the open field to them here. We are not going to let their uh, reinforcing marches stand peacefully, uh, waiting for their turn to join this Attila rally. We're going to... Um, you know, disrupt their the ball they're trying to form. We're going to block reinforcements or open field uh, presence from the south. And, you know, that's really what you need to do in a KVK situation in Rise of Kingdoms. If the enemy gets in your face, you need to punch them in the nose. A lot of what happens here is that... Um, players have played this game long enough where they realize you know when they have an advantageous position uh, a lot of players have migrated a number of times they're not really that loyal to the kingdom they're in now they're not like caring that much about the kingdom success they're a lot more loyal to the success of their own account they want to feel like the time and energy they put into this game uh, is worth it they want to have fun when lost kingdoms come around and so when, you know, these enemy kingdoms see a good situation, they do smell the blood in the water and they do try to take advantage of it. The only issue is when you smell blood in the water, it usually means there's a bunch of sharks there.
In this video series, you're going to get to see battle reports from just about every rally that takes place on a flag, fort, or pass. Unfortunately, in this video, there aren't any battle reports. But as the KVK goes on, I do make it a habit to check reports immediately after uh, a fight takes place, knowing that I might use it for content later. And I think one of the useful parts of this series is that you're going to get to see what the current meta is in Rise of Kingdoms for non-Imperium Kingdoms. This is a KVK with uh, low to high tier A Kingdoms and maybe, maybe one or two B Kingdoms. And you're going to get to see what works at this level of play. When you watch a lot of content creators, you're seeing people who play in the, the biggest and strongest Imperium kingdoms in the game. And the expectations in those kingdoms are different than they are for the rest of us. Um, in Imperium kingdoms, you're always rallying with the meta rally. You're always defending with the meta garrison and the captains on both sides have really good gear. In smaller kingdoms, you work with what you have. Sometimes you do have the meta garrison with really good gear, but other times you're looking at more the second best or third best choice for a given situation. And so we're going to be able to answer questions like, is Xeno YSS still a good garrison? Is Gilga Nebu still a good Rally. I've heard some people say that Gilga Nebu is just okay these days and that um, a monetary Artemisia is outdated at this point and so that we and so that therefore we're, we should expect a brand new Archer Rally Captain and a brand new Archer Garrison Captain in the next release. For us Gilga Nebu was the most effective rally that we had in this KVK, and we leaned on it quite a bit. It's the best rally against Xeno Flavius, and it's a tough rally to swarm. And for those two reasons alone, it's useful in a lot of situations. The only issue that you have with Archer rallies some of the time is that a lot of people don't use archer marches in their normal open field repertoire. And so there are times where there's just not a lot of archer marches available to reinforce a rally or a flag. And that's the case here with this Gilga Nebu rally on the Theodora flag. Um, our cities were a long way away and we just did not have archer marches ready to reinforce this thing. You can see my El Cid over on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, hiding in the fog of war, waiting patiently to get into this rally. It takes the enemy a minute to notice this El Cid. They really should be swarming this thing down uh, as soon as they see it. Um, you see they jump on it now, but if they had just gotten there, you know, 10 seconds earlier, then my rally would have my march would have been at about 100k troops by the time it got into this rally. I think this uh, Gilga attack does get cancelled here in a moment. Um, I'm sure it was a good trade against the Theodora, but there just wasn't enough reins to keep this thing going. And at this point, we are going to shift to defense because the enemy does have a double rally coming up on our flag. This was a pretty well done uh, double rally by the enemy. They did get both rallies to hit, uh, hit the flag at the same time. I'm sure they would have preferred for the Pakal rally to hit before the Attila Nevsky rally did, but nevertheless this is uh, solid pressure both in the rallies as well as with the open field push by 651. 
At the same time, you also see a lot of marches in blue ready to contest this open field and reinforce this flag. We have a very well-geared Xeno YSS in the flag. This fight took place prior to Flavius and Scipio entering the game. But as this series goes on, we will uh, show plenty of action with Flavius as well as with Scipio in the open field and get you uh, a very good feel for how effective those commanders are uh, at this level of gameplay. With my own marches here, I'm, I'm trying to send some marches home and bring other marches back to the field. Um, I'm also looking at what's happening at the flag and, you know, I'm just not able to pay attention to everything I need to pay attention to. And you will see my Guan YSG march just sort of wander aimlessly into enemy territory over there on the left side of the screen. This was a nice defense by us here. We've stopped them either rally from being able to reinforce and uh, the Attila Nevsky rally is going to be going down to zero uh, and the frowny faces are going to head to the left as my own Guan frowny face heads back to my city. So that's it. First video of the KVK in the books. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Put a comment down below letting me know what you're interested in seeing from this KVK. It's a two versus six strife of the eight. Very interesting, a lot of stories to be told, and I'm sure you're wondering how this thing is gonna turn out. My channel has the answer. Please stay tuned, and until next time, I will see you all on the flip side.